Podcast. Good evening, morning, afternoon, wonderful souls. Just jumping in here for a post edit addendum. I wanted to add a quick couple things that I didn't get to hit on in the live episode. Firstly, this is a new kind of episode and I'm releasing it as a bonus because I wanted to, one, get it out super quick because it's important and two, really highlight the passion, the love, and again, the importance of this chat. I also tested out a new structure, like I just mentioned. So I'd love your feedback on this structure and the flow and the topic and the way that we did this episode, because if you liked it, I want to do more of them. So let me know in reviews, let me know in comments, emails, uh, messages on social media, et cetera. The other thing I wanted to add from both myself and Shireen, we thought it would be valuable and we didn't talk about it too much because we went straight into the our, our responses and deeper information is our experience with the kinds of plant medicines. So Shri wanted to share that she's had personal experience with cannabis, DMT, mushrooms, both macro and micro, and uh, different kinds of nootropic stacks, where on my side of things, I've had extensive experience with cannabis, again, with macro journeys of mushrooms, ayahuasca, the 5-MeO DMT, uh, or Bufo Toad, medicine and LSD, if you want to count that within the in the plant medicine conversation. So with all that, enjoy, drop into your heart, and I hope this brings you so much value. One of the vi- verses that I actually really love, greater is he that is within you than that he that is in the world. Greater, like that's saying God is within me. Therefore, I am greater than whatever I encounter or domains in this world because of my power and authority within me, because I am can I am source, I am God, I am. Why aren't we seeing this power? Why aren't we acknowledging this, this ability to move through the demon, move through the entity, move through the darkness, move through the evil? It's because there is this inherent seeded belief of unworthiness. We are not fallible. We are not broken. We're not unworthy. We're not even in need of fixing we are made of pure unconditional love, right? We are made of pure power and potential. And if we don't feel that, it's not something we need to earn. It's something that we need to pull back the layers and come back to. Welcome to the Cosmic Love Antenna Podcast. This podcast is meant to encourage you to connect within so you can share your light with the world. And now, here's your host, Harrison Ma. Harrison Ma. Harrison Ma. Welcome, beautiful beings, to another episode of the Cosmic Love Antenna. This is your weekly installment of your inner connection to your outer expression, where I, your host, Harrison, here with the beautiful, mystical, wonderful guest, we get to set the loving intention of pulling back the layers, restricting health, alignment, and love. And today, if you couldn't tell by my voice, I am super excited to go into a really passionate topic with a person I love very much and and really deep dive and share some thoughts share some opinions share some perspectives to help you the listener really take your journey into <laughs> some pretty deep topics today in the best possible way before i get to that though just a quick little reminder if you're new to the show welcome it's excited to have you a part of this building community and tribe if you're a returning listener it's nice to have you back we feel you we love you If you get a lot of value out of this chat today, please share it out to your friends, family members, your lovers. The more that we can expand this conversation, the more that we can keep having these kinds of chats, right? That are important, that are that are loving, that are intentional. But with that, I do want to really introduce the topic and the guest who I have on the show today. We're going to get into all things plant medicines. We're going to get into all things entities, both negative and positive, and also. (laughs) <laughs> the nature of God, the nature of God and reality. And I could not imagine having this chat with anyone other than the beautiful Shireen Wilson. Shireen Wilson, if you are new to this person, she is an inner mind specialist, a transformational coach, a health and wellness expert, a clinical hypnotherapist, and so much more than that, as you're about to hear. She's a, 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 near, a near and loving friend and a powerful soul in general. Shireen, welcome back to the Cosmic Love Antenna. Oh, thank you, Harrison. What a beautiful intro. I gotta up I, I gotta I gotta up my game, bro. <laughs> You're well, so powerful. I so appreciate you. I appreciate you too, my friend. It's the it's the love that's flowing through me. I can't it's hard to speak sometimes because there's just so much. So it's 
I think what you hear is the balance between me getting too excited and me sort of grounding <laughs> back into the humanness, right? Um, You're good at balancing. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. I what what I want to get into today is let me set a bit of foundation of how we're going to do this because this is actually the way we're going to we're going to talk about this topic today is actually a new kind of structure I haven't done on the show before and I want to mm. really set this container before we go deep because I know a lot's going to come up around it and this topic today plant medicines entities and God it's in the zeitgeist right at the moment it's in the collective conversation. And both Shreen and I have seen it, we've felt it, we've we've had our own perspectives around it come up, and we wanted to share that today. And we're going to share it today through the lens of a particular man. This man is <laughs> Mr. Ben Greenfield. I'm not sure if my audience is too familiar with him. If you're not, definitely go check him out. He is a, a prominent voice and mind and soul within the health, fitness, and now spiritual community. And what I'm going to do, <laughs> do you want to speak to that, Shireen, quickly? <laughs> and now the yeah. spiritual community. Yeah, he's he's definitely making some waves and ruffling some feathers. So yeah. Yeah. that was accurate. Yeah. Sorry to mean to cut you off. Uh, no, no. And I, I appreciate it because it's it's that ruffling that we're going to get into, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I, I want to take him because he is a he's a reflection of the collective right because he has so many people following him right there's a reason for that so there's obviously people resonating with his message so what we're going to do today Shireen and I is I've taken some quotes from his recent episodes where he's talked about plant medicines entities and god or the nature of god and and higher power and we're going to debate them we're going to share our perspectives right I want to be very clear we're not here to uh, attack him to discredit him he has shared his beautiful message his beliefs like each and every one of us deserves to do and now shireen and i are going to do the same to help you the listener ultimately have a balanced perspective so then you can make your decision does that anything you want to add to that Shireen? yeah i was just going to say i think it's really important that we share that share our intention of that um because um, you know, Ben Greenfield is, is one of, he's done some wonderful things in the biohacking community and really, um, exposed science in, in some holistic ways, um, which has been really beneficial. And, and he's also gone down some rabbit holes himself. And as now, like we said earlier, joining more of a spiritual community and exposing his beliefs, which is wonderful as well because it creates contrast. I think the reason why we wanted to do this is because we felt this was, um, I mean, giving a little bit of, uh, I don't know what I'm just going to say it. it, There was a little bit of fear Mm -hmm. coming through. And so we wanted to just, you know, (laughs) we're love, we're love (laughs) and insight and knowledge and wisdom and all the fun things. And so we just wanted to kind of debunk some of the fear. Yes. So yeah, you, I thought I would just add oh, that. It's beautiful, Shreen. That's exactly, if I was to summarize, yeah, if I was to summarize the thing that I was picking up from all of his perspectives, it's yeah, it's that, that, that four letter word. So yeah, we're going to, we're going to go into it. I uh, just to um, give a bit more context here, if, if people are interested, if you want to go, I've taken direct quotes from his episodes and I've tried to get it exactly correct, just to make sure we get his exact perspective and we don't mischaracterize in any way. But I would encourage you to go listen to his episodes, right? Because that's what really got us <laughs> us in the space that we're in now. And his episodes on his podcast, it's the Ben Greenfield Life Show. His episodes, they're called The Pros and Cons of Plant Medicine and Why Am I, why am I, not, why am I No Longer Going to Be Using Plant Medicine. So that's if you want to search them in your podcast player. All right. So with the box set, with all the foundations uh, set up here now, Shireen, I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat a, I'm going to repeat some quotes and then, mm. and then we'll just take, is, turns. This a tr- is this my trigger warning? Yeah. This is your trigger warning, Shereen. This is, <laughs> this is your trigger warning. And right. it's going to start off pretty simple. Like it's not like, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll warm you up, my friend. It's all good. Okay. We'll, thank we'll you. Warm up. But towards the end, it gets pretty deep. So just, just for your sake and for people listening, this is going to have a bit of a, a momentum to it. 
So we'll, I'll share the quotes and then we'll just share our perspectives on them. All right. <clears throat> so the first one here I'm going to share is, this is Ben Grateful quoting him. It's intriguing that gods, entities, spirits, angels, and demons choose to interact with human beings through the use or ingestion of certain plants. End of quote. He obviously keeps going off that. And by plants, he means plants in general, like herbs and things, but he's also referring to uh, plant medicines. So I think this is a good place to begin because it really opens the door about what we're talking about here in relation to plant medicines. And what I'll say, and, I'll, and then I'll pass it to you, Shrink, because I know you, you have a lot of um, herbal background on this. When we take plant medicines, I think it's important to understand what happens in terms of the ego and spirit dynamic, right? So if you take something like mushrooms, psilocybin, ayahuasca, something you're in the ego complex in the mind, the, the default mode network turns off, right? And this is often mm. our, our barrier. I like to call it the windscreen in the car when you're driving down the highway that protects us from you know, everything, from consciousness, mm. from, from God slapping you in the face is the way I would <laughs> explain it. And obviously there's a spectrum to this. There's a spectrum and people are, some people are more ready to receive that than others. So I'll start there and I just want to preface that with an understanding. What what do you want to add to this first quote, my friend? Can you read it again? Because yeah. it's, it's it's great. In, it's intriguing that God's entity, spirits, angels, and demons choose to interact with human beings through the use of or through the use of or ingestion of certain plants. Well, I think this was, and I think I had said this to you when we listened to it, is one thing that I found really interesting is that he's really, he's, he's saying that this is an access point. And I would agree yeah, yeah, that um, plants are an access point. Um, and there are other access points that if you are well-versed in spirituality and different types of spirituality, you would understand that, that I think there are other access points. It's not just plant medicine um, or plants, so to say. Um, and I love that you just gave a perfect example of that ego. And, you know, I think, I think where, what, what bothered me when I didn't bother me, but what sparked my interest when he said this is, is I felt he was first of all saying that, you know, this, this is the only access and it's not. Yeah. And yeah. The other thing is, is, is like, you can interact with entities, <laughs> um, God, spirit beings, angels, demons, by doing a variety of activities. Um, what do you think runner's high is? Um, you know, um, it's removing that conscious barrier, which gives you access to God, source, and other beings and entities. I actually was talking to someone the other day and she was a professional athlete, a hurdle runner. And she said she would get so much adrenaline and get so high off of competing that when she was doing hurdles, she could see the other realm. And I was like, what? And she goes, I had to stop running hurdles because specifically hurdles, just because you had to jump over. So you're, you're like, or else you're going to hurt yourself. And so she said that, yeah, I, I had to stop for a bit because I would be seeing flashes before my eyes because I was entering the other realm. And I'm like, interesting, interesting. So like, is there a disclaimer? Be careful, people doing hurdles and track may cause an encounter with entities, angels, demons, and other forces. No, I mean, we have access to all of these things because source energy is always available and these powers that be in other dimensions are always available to us too. Yeah. So, it, so that's I mean, the, that's the big point here. And I, I, we're going to get to this later too, because there's another thing he says that really brings up this idea that, you know, everything is spirit. Everything is God. Everything is, is the quantum field. It's not just a plant medicine conversation, but we'll get back to that. And I think I just want to, to add to what you're saying, my friend, 
we also have to consider the entity, the spirit that is the plant itself, right? Totally. It's, it's, we're, we're not just ingesting the plant and then opening ourselves up to a whole lot of other things. Yes. But we also have to understand the relationship with the spirit that is the plant itself. Right? Yes. We, like that, that relationship, you know, I, it's funny. I was having a conversation with my sister yesterday about how my dad and I love you, Dad. If you listen to this episode, how my dad <laughs> has a has a habit of just you know buying a lot of beautiful organic food and just not eating it, wasting it, and just it goes out. And I was saying to my sister, I was like, I I'm gonna make it my habit now, and I've started doing this to go to my dad's house and look at his in his refrigerator for the food he's not eating and taking it home so I can eat it. And I said the reason for this is that I'm respecting the energy of the plan. I'm respecting the spirit, or I don't want it to just fade in the fridge and the cold you know i want to respect it i want to have a prayer around it and consume it and use that energy for my life right and Mm -hmm. this i think this is the message here with this point is yes plant medicines are very powerful they're very powerful entities you were talking about before we came on the chat about mother Aya and ayahuasca and yes they have their their own thing and so is a carrot so is Mm -hmm. so is a a broccoli a piece of broccoli right yeah, absolutely. And to add contrast and polarity, so are other, you know, we look at everything as a frequency too. And, you know, these plants just are a higher frequency. So they create a quote unquote gateway to higher frequencies and they to other dimensional realms, which can be a higher frequency as well. And I look at other things that we consume or engage in that are very negative frequencies and open us up into the negative frequency realm. And so I think, again, it comes down to intentions and the respect of, you know, your personal intention and respect of the the energy that you're using. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, sorry, keep going. You know, I I can look at the water that I have on my desk and I can look at it as, oh, it's just water I have to drink. Or I can be like, this is life source energy that's going to replenish my soul and I can live off this. And, you know, like it, it, you get to change, you get to decide as you're partaking and having relationship with it. And you supercharge it. We know now, right, through the Emoto Institute and the way Absolutely. the work of Veda Austin. And we know that, and in the, you know, the, 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 the fourth phase of water, and we know that intention and love impacts the molecules, not just of water, but the things that are the water, the things that water is in, such as the plants that we're talking about. Right. So anyway, this is, so let's, let's go to the next point here, shrink. Cause we're going to, I wanted that to be the, the warm up. So continuing on with this uh, piece of entities coming in, in every, situation, not just within the ingestion of plants. The next quote here is, when you begin interacting with these entities like that through the ingestion of plants, is what he's referring to, you open yourself up to a great deal of influence, either by the spirits themselves or even the facilitator. Right, I'll read that one again for you, my friend. When you begin interacting with entities like that through the plant medicines, you open yourself up to a great deal of influence either by the spirits or even the facilitator. So first thing I'll say, we'll put the facilitator piece aside because I think that is a very real, you know, thing that we could have a whole conversation about in terms of, you know, spiritual people taking advantage of, you know, someone that's under a, on a journey to, I think, you know, that's a very real valid maybe conversation mm-hmm. for another time. But I want to keep going further here with opening yourselves up to the influence a great deal of influence with the ingestion of plants. And to Shireen's point before, yes, this happens through plants, but it also happens by walking into a house where someone just died. It also happens Absolutely. where walking into, you know, I don't want to use the stereotype, but walking into a ceremony, if you're into a, um, into a cemetery, right, where, you've, where if you're attuned and you're sensitive, you're going to feel the influence of God life around you, right? So I wonder if you could speak to this. Sure. Well, and on the flip side, I mean, understanding how the mind works and the unconscious mind within seven seconds of turning your television on, you are under the influence, you are in trance state. 
you are under the influence. Within three seconds of picking up your phone, it's an anchor. It's within three seconds of picking up your phone. You are under the influence of those energies coming off of your phone. You are in a very susceptible influential state. And there are scientific studies coming out now saying that that people perceive text messages twice as negative as if it was said in person. There's a lower frequency receiving it over text message versus said in person. And Emails can be up to 10 times more negative. So like, you know, if you were going to compare, you know, apples, we're going to compare apples, like, but let's compare the types of energies and, and you are susceptible, like you said, walking into a home where, or a ceremony, you're yeah. susceptible walking to Costco. Anybody yeah. been to Costco and had anxiety? Hello? <laughs> like. That's, yeah. So this is. Uh, and again, I just want to, I'm probably going to keep reminding the listener of this as we're going forward, but this is not us really uh, attacking Ben for the, his beliefs and perspectives here. This is just us giving the opposite end and our belief around this. And it, it shows you, so a couple things here rise up, right? It shows you that, you know, an activity like having plant medicines isn't, it is something if you choose to do it, then please lean in and see what happens and be careful and all the things. But you can have just it's it's one door. It's one door to the realm that it allows mm-hmm. you to walk into, right? And the belief the the example that you just gave about text messages. I'm I see it in my life when I watch TV, like when I watch, but specifically TV shows that sometimes I just want to unwind and just relax and put something on that. <laughs> saying it very numbs nicely. you. Yeah, yeah, numbs me. And I'll feel after the show, I'll just, I'll check in with my energetic being. And I'm like, oh, this, I feel heavy. I feel, I feel yeah. influenced in the word that Ben said. So it's, you know, as we start to get into the spiritual conversation, it's life is spiritual, not just within this one category. But another point here that I want to get your perspective on within this quote, Shireen, is we're only focusing on the negative here, the negative influence. We're also mm-hmm. ignoring in the case of plant medicines, what they open us to on the positive scale, right? I know for me, for example, through the ingestion of certain plant medicines, I've been able to contact angels. I've been able to contact ancestors and loved ones that maybe, you know, who knows how long it would have taken me in my normal practice for that loving entity to influence me. So maybe you can speak to the positive side, the the positive polarity of the influence here? <laughs> well, you know, I think it's important the audience knows uh, I myself have used plant medicine and I know yeah. you have as well. And yeah. so you, you we're not just sitting here going, <laughs> we've had the experiences and I've had, I've had positive and less positive experiences. And there's areas where I would go and not go. Um, and things I would take and not take because I've checked in with myself and with my spiritual being. And I, there's just, I'm not comfortable going there and that's okay. I don't need to have an ex- a reason for that. I'm not going to label it as evil as dark, or I'm just not there. I'm not ready for whatever reason. I would say the positive influences of, you know, like you had said, removing the windscreen, removing, you know, you know, as a therapist, just seeing so many people hung up on the littlest things yeah. and spending a lot like years upon years trying to work through some of the trauma. I mean, you know, uh, tapping in or using a tool such as plant medicine really can open you up into a place of freedom, a place of reprieve um, with anxiety and depression. And, you know, it's, it's, one thing that I noticed in, in Ben Greensfield podcast is he's, he kind of, in my opinion, it sounded like he misused the intent, like he misused plant medicine to begin with. He went in with to biohack the body for his greater gain. And like, for me, that's not the first intention of plant medicine. Plant medicine, in my opinion, is to build a relationship greater to source and if the byproduct is I run faster, cool. If the byproduct is I get more work done, cool. But it's to 
connect us back to our, uh, ourselves and to source so that we have the answers within to go from there. Um, so some of the inf- some of the positive influencing that it has is it does connect you. It does connect you to source. It connects you to spirit beings. It clears your head. I mean, I don't know how many times I've I've just been so stuck on one thing. And it's been like, and I do the work in journaling and gratitude and meditation and nature walks and eating healthy. And you do the things because I don't want to say it is a one-stop shop and that you should just do plant medicine to get rid of your problems, but you do the things, but you're still struggling to connect. I mean, just one ceremony, one dose or one relationship encounter with plant medicine. It's like, it's gone. Yeah. And, and and this is, so I'm so glad you're saying this, my friend. And again, another disclaimer here, both Shreen and I, what we're not saying is that this is going to happen for every single person, right? But what we're trying to make very clear that it's there, it's possible. It is a door, right? And if we're shutting this down and not allowing this view to come in, then, and we're going to talk about that. I have some more points here coming up, but if you're going through a very real mental health challenge and this has come in through your intuition, your higher guidance, and you're feeling like it is a step to take. Again, going back to the intention of this podcast we want to lovingly help you through the fear and let you know that this is this is a possibility that can come your way, right? And um, yeah, let's leave that one there. Let's let's get to the next one because it's I can feel the energy ramping up, my friend. Uh, so the next big quote here is what what we often call schizophrenia, psychosis, mm-hmm. bipolar. Can this is a quote again? Mm. This is this is another quote from him, right? What we often call schizophrenia, psychosis, bipolar, yes, can have a neurochemical background, like we were just saying, right? But when we witness, but when I witness that in people who ha- who have experimented with or heavily dosed themselves with plant medicine, I would go as far to say that part of this is a demonic influence or influence from a dark spirit or energy during the ceremony. <laughs> let me i'm gonna say that one again so basically what is he saying there yeah can you summarize it yeah, yeah i'm gonna let me just repeat it again what we often call schizophrenia bipolar or or psychosis which can often have a neurochemical basis when we witness that in in people who experiment or heavily dose themselves with plant medicines i would go as far to say that part of this demonic is a demonic influence or or influence from a dark spirit or energy during the ceremony so this is you know this is heavy right there's there's a lot here and i want to get i can't wait to hear your perspective on this shereen but i think the first thing to point out is as shereen was speaking about in the previous point there are very real mental health conditions right ben just highlighted some of them psychosis bipolar schizophrenia and I do agree with Ben in the in terms of if you go into a ceremony with one of these conditions and it's not if you're not looked after with a proper set and setting, there's not a a practitioner there that's guiding you, then yes, when you like I said before, when you take down the window screen of the ego mind and you're blasted by this by the wind of God and consciousness, then that's going to that's going to leave a pretty unstable ground for you to take a step forward right you might fall into the fear you might fall into the mm-hmm. belief systems the things that can exas- exacerbate mm-hmm. those mental challenges however however <laughs> what what i think we often overlook in this point is we're not separated we're not separate we're not a mental being or a spiritual being we're both right and in ancient traditions when when people did practice plant medicines with these same conditions even though they probably didn't have the lexicon of definitions to define them in a book on a shelf somewhere right that person would have been treated by what by who they would have been treated by a shaman and a mm-hmm. shaman or the witch doctor of the tribe would have had knowledge to help that person across their entire holistic being so not just their mental health challenges, not just their spiritual practices, not just their physical well-being, but they saw the person as the whole. So 
what I think the first point here is, and I want to pass to you, my friend, is we want to be very careful of just saying that someone who has schizophrenia walking into a plant medicine ceremony is going to exacerbate their schizophrenia or create schizophrenia from a mental health paradigm while also just totally overlooking you know a kundalini rising experience that might actually help them through it right am i making sense what i'm saying what are your thoughts yeah and i think there's so many parts here that i yeah. just make my make the passion come out yeah because I mean, first of all, for there's been a lot of science debunking this now and saying that it is actually becoming the top leading treatment for bipolar person. Um, well, personality disorder is a bit diff difficult, but bipolar, um, schizophrenia, uh, paranoia, anxiety, it is actually coming up to being extremely su successful. Um uh, and that's why they're certifying MDMA therapy, which is interesting um, because he seems to, <laughs> he said something about that. I remember. Um, and you know, that's why they're going into the ketamine therapy and, and it, it's being taught now in universities that this can be very helpful. And it's actually debunking saying it's not going to make you have a psychotic break. What what's happening here is, is that exactly what you're saying is, cognitive dissonance can cause you to lose your footing mm. and what is up and what is down. And so if you do a hero's dose of mushrooms and you're starting to realize that everything's an illusion mm. and, you know, you're going down the rabbit holes of nothing is real, then why am I paying bills and why am I doing this? And you're having an extra, now you're having an existential crisis in a very short amount of time that can cause a big, uh, you know, the cognitive dissonance, which mm. now we have a personality disorder coming out because mm. there's derealization happening yep. where they go, I don't know self from real. I don't know self from, you know, and that's where I think it's being, it's being prescribed as, or diagnosed as a psychotic break yeah. after doing these things. But again, the science is showing that it's actually preventing a lot of that. And so and then to go ahead for him to go ahead and say, well, that's a demonization. Um, yeah, that's the, let, let's talk about that next. Let's talk about the demonic influence, the entity piece of this, because there's a whole entity piece to this piece, right? Um, so let's let's go to that next. Let's go to that. So the, the second part of this is, I would go as far to say that part of this is a demonic influence or an influence from a dark spirit or energy during the ceremony. So this, you know, this continues the entity theme here with the plant medicines. They're the being in this being in the ceremony opens you up to the negative polarity of the entity world. And something, and this is the part, and I've said this to you before, my Shireen, this is the part I'm really passionate about is we're not when we when we demonize, and I, you know, Ben also being the Christian that he is. And we'll talk more about that coming up, but he often goes to the devil and 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 the demons, like he's saying in this quote. And the, the, not only does this exacerbate the fear piece that Serena and I have have been talking about, but it often also overlooks the value in the negative polarity, right? Mm -hmm. So, what I'm getting at here is, if I'm in a plant medicine ceremony, and yes, some some negative entity i don't even like using demonic but let's just say negative entity comes in the question that needs to be asked is why are they coming in why mm -hmm. are they coming in in the first place and more and another question you could add to this is why are they staying right yeah often, often people have challenges with this because they they don't. They, they go into a ceremony. They attract the entity, and then they attach to them, and then they walk out with that entity attached. So mm -hmm. this is the piece uh, I'd love to pass back to you here, Shireen, to speak to this and what we're kind of missing here when we just sort of relegate this to fear and overlook it. I think it comes back to core beliefs too, and so I'm going to add this in. I have the fundamental belief 
that everything happens for my greatest yes. and highest good. And yes. I believe that everything is well-being and everything is flowing to me and for yes. me. And everything I experience is for to create contrast and to yes. create polarity in my life so that I drives me forward into desire and my true authentic self and communion with God, source, mm-hmm. all that. That is my belief. So this duality of right and wrong, I don't, it doesn't exist. And I think it is man-made construct. I think the devil, and I'm just going to say it. I think I grew, by the way, I grew up indoctrinated in Christianity and I have now come through and say, I think it is all man-made constructs um, that create thought forms. And I mean, especially the fear, right? Yeah. The fear. Exactly. And so if I'm in a ceremony and I have been, I have been, I had a one-on-one session where I began to see the facilitator's darkness and I saw within him his shadows and I saw what was attached to him. And here's the thing. I believe that if I'm encountering something on a negative frequency, it's because it's within me and it needs to be reconciled. And I have the power to reconcile that. And so at to the time, it scared the crap out of me. I mean, I asked for the session to end because I was like, oh my, like, you know, I'm starting to see your stuff and yet you're leading me to get rid of my yes. stuff. And what it taught me after having integrated it was we all have darkness within us, quote unquote darkness, which is really just exiled shadowed parts that we haven't acknowledged and brought love into because of constructs, because of separation, because of being in a disconnected world. And I was able to bring that back in and be like, wow, it actually taught me that you can still heal and heal others at the same simultaneously. And it was actually really beautiful. So I think that's where I got really rattled is that it's creating this, you're powerless if you're in a situation like that. And it's like, no, this is happening to you and for you. And I do think that people need to be equipped and Harris and I have talked about this many times in other talks about if you're going into a ceremony, there needs to be more equipment around spiritual engagement and warfare, so to say, yeah. for lack of a better word of, hey, if this comes up, here's what you do. Here's how you encounter it, because you have free will and choice in that. And the facilitator should be guiding you into ex- in- integrating that, overcoming it, reconciling it, whatever that is so that you can experience all that you have. Oh, so beautiful, my friends. Like that, that if anyone takes anything from this chat, especially in regards to entities, it's exactly everything that Shereen just highlighted there with, uh, you know, the attraction of it and the, and the pos- and the, the purpose of it. Right. This is we uh, you're reading my mind, Shereen. We're going to speak more about the good and evil in, in the in the human body, and it's uh, the like attracts like is the resonance, right? And if we, I'll just add to what Shereen's saying here about bringing in that entity. Right. If a negative entity comes in, not only is it connecting to a piece inside of you that needs to be seen, as as Shereen said about the shadow. What happens to that negative entity once you accept it and see it? What happens? Does it just eject from you? Sometimes, depending on the type of entity, my experience. But a lot of the other times, that negative entity is also someone or something or maybe a a, a soul. Yeah, or a construct or even a soul that is stuck in a certain vibra- vibration or frequency due to their own trauma, due to their own pain, right? And they're now being attracted to your shadow that resonates with them, not to punish you, not to put a score on a tally of how bad you are, but so they can be helped through your light, right? So they're attracting in through the shadow to be alchemized and see by you to then be freed, right? Mm-hmm. And we we totally ignore all of that if we mm-hmm. if we if we're stuck in the fear, right? If we're stuck mm-hmm. in the this is only bad, this is happening to me, not for me, right? Mm-hmm. So let's let's land that one there <laughs> because there's more. I do just wanna yeah, I do yeah, just wanna yeah. speak to a little bit to the mental health thing because yes, let's talk. You know, I I think we there is a caution there whenever you're taking something that causes a dopamine rise or a serotonin uh, a rush of serotonin. And this is, 
this is why I, I educate other people and I had to educate myself. If you have a history of mental health, health issues and it runs in the family and you're a little concerned, talk to, a you know, um, a plant medicine practitioner, a shaman, whoever, um, someone who's educated in this, because there's things you can do to create a buffer so that you don't have so much of a kickback because you do have a rush of serotonin release. However, what people don't understand is that actually can reactivate serotonin uptake systems. And so now, you know, you may feel low for a couple of days, but it may kickstart <laughs> your whole brain again to start creating the, to balance the chemistry that it was meant to create. And so, you know, I, I will speak to that. There can be a biological effect when taking, you know, plant medicine. Um, and so do your research, but there, but there's ways around that. There's no way, there's no reason why you should be afraid of that because there's resources and sources to help you through it. And, and that's why that, you know, I'm so grateful. I'm really grateful for Ben talking about this and doing this because it's 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 creating more conversation right it's creating this conversation it's creating more people that are learning that are experimenting that are understanding and creating containers for people to go seek support go seek help so yeah could not agree more thank you for adding that shireen okay let's get let's get going here so we're gonna so we've talked about the medicines talked about the entities the next couple of points here it's we're going to start going deeper into the nature of God and and reality because mm. because this is <laughs> should I have taken some mushrooms before yeah. this conversation? Because <laughs> this is really the this is really the, the the lens that Ben's coming in through is you know he's he's on his own beautiful spiritual awakening journey through his through the, his religious lens and that's what he's attaching this to. It's not about the plant medicines. It's a really a big about it. Uh, the bigger conversation here is the relationship with us and God. So I'll read this next quote, Shireen, and um, just maybe ground yourself for this one. <laughs> uh, it's, it's very easy to put your faith in, in being able to have God or the gods at your beck and call. With, in the, what he's referring to is with the medicines. Being able to divine, being able to experience God, but not really ever knowing God. Being able to experience the deep spiritual awakening, but never going through the blood sweat and tears, the chopping wood, the carrying water, the hard work that actually oh develops true spiritual enlightenment. Suffering, you must <laughs> suffer. Yeah. You must suffer to know God. Uh, yeah, oh, that, gosh. So this is, is Shereen's right. highlighting. This is the crux <laughs> of this point. So I, I'm going to say something because I, I – there are parts of this that I agree with, but I'm going to hit those first so we can get into the what I don't agree with. I do agree that we do need devotion. We do need loving discipline to, to get back to and remember, and I say these words very intentionally, our deeper spiritual godly essence. What Shireen is hitting on here, that it, where there starts to starts to uh, separate is I do not agree that divinity and godliness is entered into with a state of you know Serene said it bluntly suffering or always doing the hard work or always forcing yourself into the red and and doing the things all the time I I think again that can be part of the journey because when we heal when we move through trauma right it can be very challenging for a lot of us and through that trauma we do get back to our divinity but what we're overlooking here is the feminine we're overlooking overlooking the divine feminine in many ways and the divine feminine is the allowing is the being is the flowing is the being still for a moment and being quiet and quieting the mind which requires no sweat no blood and that has a, as much of a gateway and an openness to your divinity and God as the taking action and the pushing. So I'll land it there, Shireen. What, what, what do you want to add to this point? I just, it just, it just feels gross. Like, I'm just going to be honest. It just feels gross when you hear that. I mean, life's hard enough. Um, we're already, we come disconnected. We Boom, you're on this planet. You're disconnected from 
a different reality from where I believe you you came from, which is source. And so, boom, you've come to another dimension, another reality. And yes, you chose planet Earth because it is Earth school and it is going to be a lot of you're going to experience lessons, some lessons contrast, yeah. polarity, things that are going to bring things out in you, you know, and <laughs> to say like, and now you need to earn that, you know, I think just social media has made it difficult enough to mm -hmm. connect to God. I think there's enough things that we've had enough players in the game that it shouldn't be more difficult than it needs to be. Yeah. And so like blood, sweat and tears. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't quite understand that mm -hmm. <laughs> in the sense of that's just a really sad way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. um, because I think it's enough that we have to peel back the programming, peel back the conditioning, yeah. peel back the uh, the opinions of others. It's enough that we have to go through that. And then to, um, you know, I don't know, kind of grovel at God's feet and beg to be seen or heard. And, oh, I feel like he's saying, I felt, when I heard him say that, I felt like he was saying, oh, and it's just, you're you're skipping over all of it. It's like, no, no, it, it's, it's not skipping over because a lot of people don't understand is that you continue to integrate the plant medicine for years. Mm. And so you just, all you're doing is accelerating it a little bit, yeah. but you still have to do the inner work. You still have to create the commitment and de devotion to connect back to source. Um, however, I know people that, you know, did, plant medicine in the 60s and 70s and had a you know a transformational or traumatic experience doesn't matter and they you know seeing them in their 70s and 80s there's something different about them you know and they get it and and there is an awareness to them where i don't think you would have gotten if you had just read your bible every single day um, sorry to say that. And, and that's, there's just, there's an unraveling and peeling back the layers of, of conditioning when you engage in plant medicine. Yeah. So <laughs> a couple of things here, Shereen. First thing I just want to say is if you are religious and Christian and Catholic or any Abrahamic religion listening to this episode, we want to give you a lot of love and light, right? We're definitely not here to to uh, disrespect you or to judge you or to really, you know, throw any, throw any hate onto your beautiful belief systems and everything you've been through. We are here to share our perspectives and our views on this and what we've experienced, both Shereen and I, as Shereen said before, we've grown up in religious households and we've, we've been through our own journey. And I, as I like to say about religious uh, ideologies, I think there are fundamentally beautiful spiritual foundations of every single one however mm -hmm. there are a lot of man-made structures on top that cause a lot of separation between mm -hmm. us and god and that is a big crux of this point here and you you, you nailed it shereen in the pulling back this a big part of what this point highlights to me is that it's the image that comes into my mind is that i'm gaining something right i'm getting a trophy i'm getting a gold medal if I if I do all the things in the right order, and now then I get the thing, I get the God, I get the divinity, I get the power. But in my experience, the thing is already there. <laughs> the God mm -hmm. is in mm -hmm. us; it's there, and yeah. it's it's a pulling back. It's a pulling back the layers, like you said, not a gaining of. So I think I just we'll 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 wrap, wrap this here because there's there's a few more points I want to get to that are going to bring up more things. But I just, as we speak more about this God piece, I want everyone listening to be very mindful of that separation because that is really, I think, a big crux of this whole conversation is, am I separate to God? Am I worthy of totally. God, right? Yeah. Next one here, Shereen. This one's a little bit less, this is a bit shorter, just to give us a bit of a break. Uh, quoting Ben again, God warned us about this, and he's referring to in the Bible, originally, which is that evil influence 
the evil can influence you and can and can be subject and you can be subject to this under the influence of pharmakia. So let me repeat that one again. Oh. God oh. God warned us about this in the Bible originally, which is the evil influence you can be subject to under the influence of pharmakia. So uh, <laughs> Do you want to go first here, Serena, or do you want me to go? Well, I think just so people have an understanding, because I know the yeah. book he referenced, and yeah. I read it. And um, Do you mean the Bible? or <laughs> No, the book Pharmakia. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, explain that. Uh, and uh, Pharmakia, he's, he's basically saying it's, it's a form of witchcraft. It's, it's distortion of, of um, medicine and how it can draw you into into darkness. And to be honest, when I read the book years ago, um, I took away, if anything, how we shouldn't be taking something that's a natural source and biochemically changing it. And so that was my take when I read the book he's referencing. I was like, um, okay, I got, I was like, I'm never taking Tylenol. I'm never because of that drew me into, oh, okay, now I'm taking man's wisdom and it's corrupting what God gave us, something natural like opiates, right? And and now we're taking it and we're creating morphine out of it. And now we're messing with, we're, we're, bastardizing we're playing it. God, right? We're bas- exactly bastardizing it. And so um, that's what I took away from it. And it was interesting because he quoted this in the sense of, Oh no, plant medicine falls into that file uh, under that category, which personally I'm like this, that if I was a loving God, I don't know if I would litter the earth with plants that were evil. I I just don't know if I would do that. And to Ben's, uh, to jump to Ben's aid here too, he does, he does acknowledge that he, I think that was in his, the third episode, he did acknowledge that he understands that God did make everything and why would he make all these beautiful plants if they were not there to be you know utilized in some kind of way so um did you have another point there otherwise no, there's something okay ahead. so Good this point. is i actually wanted to i agree with you my, my friend and the, the thing that i wanted to pull out of this point is which is the evil influence you can be subject to under the influence of these plants under the pharmacia and i want to go back to something that you said before around evil is not an outside thing. It is an outside thing in terms of, I look at you, Shireen, and there's evil in you. There's also evil in me. And I want to read a quote here, one of my favorite quotes from the book, uh, The Gulag Archipelago by the author, I'm going to butcher his name, but Alexander, Alexander Slozhletsen, I can't, it's a Polish last name, It's you can look it up. But the quote is, the line dividing Good and evil cuts through the heart of every human being. And who is willing to destroy a piece of his own heart? So what I'm getting at here with this beautiful quote from this man is evil is in us. (laughs) Evil is us, right? And when we talk about being having influence by outside spirits, again, under the on when we're taking plant medicines. We have to ask the question, like I said before, why are they coming in? Why is this evil influence flowing into my world? Is it because it's lurking around every corner waiting to get us? Or is it resonating with the darkness that is in my heart that I might be making either conscious choices to lean into for whatever given reason, no judgment, or I'm unconsciously suppressing that needs to be seen through the light of day so I can alchemize it? Right. So I know we've talked about this point thus far, but anything else you want to add to this, Shereen? Well, I mean, I'm even leaning towards these days, the more I evolve and connect to myself and connect to source, I really don't even know if I believe that evil exists. Um, And so it's a construct. I mean, when you say evil, I think exiled parts. I mean, do I have exiled parts that I'm not aware of that I'm disconnected from? Yes. Yeah. Is there evil within me? No, I don't have ill intent. I have programmed ill intent (laughs) because I've been shown by other people and because I have choice and because we have an ego, um, you know, uh, there, uh, but to say like evil, that's pretty harsh. 
And it's like the boogeyman, like, oh, if I take this plant medicine, the boogeyman is going to come get me. Well, that boogeyman is, is a reflection of an exiled part. Um, you know, and, and it's not necessarily evil. And it's again, what you do with it. I mean, have I woken up and seen a construct on the end of my bed? Yes. And did it evoke an emotion to me? Yes. And what did I do about that? I rolled over and went back to sleep because it's like, do I, do you need something? No. Okay. We good. Cool. Because I'm good. You can leave now. Like, it, it, you know, it's just like, because I already know that I'm doing the work that I need to do. I already know that I'm whole, complete and loved. And I, I came here as a divine being and divine with a divine purpose. Yeah. I love it, Serene. And I think maybe a better word to sub, to replace evil with is just negative polarity, positive and negative polarity. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Right. And just, and we'll talk about that more in the next point because you are beautifully highlighting it. Like this, there's just so much value in that. I'm using my fingers here, negative, uh, evil or negative polarity, right? When we love that piece for what it is and we open it up and we ask, how are you serving me? Right. Then we bring in more light, right? There's more value there. So I just, people are listening that is with this entity conversation that's really such a powerful piece that obviously shireen's experienced and myself all right i got two more for you shireen i got two more here before we wrap up and these again just these are the these that these are deep and they're continuing this momentum it's funny that you said the boogeyman at the end of the bed so <laughs> this next quote is this is ben okay who the hell am i to think that I can go into this world and be able to be smarter and more elusive than a demon that's been playing around with humans for 8,000 years. Ooh. Who am I to say I am going to put a Bible at the end of my bed? I pray <laughs> I, and, I, and pray I've been a Christian and pray and, I, and say that I've been a Christian for 40 years. I got this. I think it's playing with fire. So <laughs> this, again, this just, this continues here with what we're talking about with the if demons. That's your evil. intention though. Okay. You yeah. know, if you're taking, you know, I did, I have a colleague and he said, I'm going to slay some dragons today. And I thought, oh, this is interesting. And he did a very high dose of mushrooms, extremely high. Um, and he's well understanding of the medicine and he did a very high dose. And he did. He went in and he saw entities and dragons and you name it because he set that construct up in the intention of going in there and he wanted to see it and he wanted to divulge it and engage with it. And so he created it's literally like a holographic universe that we have here, folks. And I hope people are getting that. So if you are going into mushrooms because you're like, I'm just open to anything, whatever I see happens. Well, guess what? You're going to see pink elephants. You're going to see you know, demons, quote unquote, you're going to, if you're opening your, if I go in and I'm going, I just want to hear my ancestral trauma through my dad's bloodline. And I deal want, I don't want to forgive my mom. And I want to do this. You know, the intention is going to be completely different. What I'm going to see, you know, yes, I still might see a negative en entity or frequency, but my experience and relationship with it is going to be completely different. And understanding that it's all what, what, constructs, it's all constructs. And to say, to belittle himself, who am I? Like, that's, that's just, I'm sorry. But that is, yeah. I mean, who am I? Like, okay. You're the most after jump in here, because you, <laughs> you think you're exactly hitting what I wanted to highlight here. Who are you? You are the most powerful being in your reality, right? This is, this is just, I want to, highlight this and Shireen's getting hitting on it with the with the you creating your reality this could not be more true right i i often take within this perspective the vedic worldview right and the vedic worldview teaches and shows that there is no objective outside reality right there is just the reality that you first internally create and then you project right through your lenses right so that's exactly what Shireen is saying if you go in with the intention what is an intention right your intention is your potential intention so it's your reality they create so if you go in as and i love the pink pink elephant imagery my friend you will see that but it we need to come back to our power here 
And let's speak to the fear because if we go into this reality that we, we understand that we're creating with fear, that is going to exacerbate the negative polarity. So let's, let's talk about this, Shreen. Let's talk about the scale of consciousness here, right? The Hawkins scale of consciousness, right? If I'm going into this world and I see the demon, right, that we've stated that we're probably projecting and creating, if I'm in a state of fear, that that's only ever going to exacerbate the tension, the resistance, the pain, whatever you're experiencing. So what's the alternative here? Well, the alternative is to raise that vibration, is to raise that frequency. With what? With love, with awe, with curiosity, with gratitude for the purpose of the demon. Right, go. Well, even go. just moving up the scale, honey, you yeah. just move to anger would be a better frequency yeah. than fear, right? Like yeah. just just moving just moving up. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. And like, go ahead. Go. Yeah, keep going. No, this is we could speak a lot about this point. Keep going. I found this really interesting because I have uh, memorized much of the Bible. And I just found it so interesting when Ben said this in the podcast, because one of the vi- verses that I actually really love is greater is he that is in within you than, than he that is in the world. And like, I get goosebumps still thinking of that because it's greater is he that is within you than that he that is in the world. Greater, like that's saying God is within me. Therefore, I am greater than whatever I encounter or domains in this world. And so it's like for him to say to bastardize that scripture right there and say, who am I? It's like, who are you? Are you not the son of God? Like, are you not a child of Christ? Like, are you not? Jesus came and when he left, he said, you will do greater things than I did. Well, what did Jesus do? He slayed, you know slayed quite a few demons. Uh, he conquered death. Uh, he healed the sick and he tur- turned around before he left. He said, don't worry, you're going to do greater things than I did, which means you have the power to do all those things. And so for Ben to just say, who am I? Like, I, I get his premise of you don't want, am I going after demons? Is that my life goal? No. But if I was to encounter something, you got this. I would know how to deal with it yeah because of my power and authority within me because i am can i am source i am god i am and i think that's where you know he's just going in with plant medicine is evil and so if you go up with that premise i mean then you're expecting all of this to unravel and then you would say who am i like yeah well shireen i think actually there's something even deeper here you're overlooking and we'll get to it in this next point. I think it's all of what you just said. And I think it's what this next point highlights. So let's, let's jump to that now. And I think this is a, this is the last point of the show. And I really just want you to feel these, these next words here, because I think I, I, in my opinion, I think this is actually the crux of, you know, Shireen just talked about going into the plant medicines with the, with the fear and the creating your reality and the separation to God, I think this next point really highlights all of these points. So quoting Ben again, people aren't inherently good. When left to our own volition, we make a lot of mistakes. We get selfish, we covet, we lie, we steal, we kill. Then we feel if we're set up with these pie-in-the-sky socialistic communistic societies where we encourage everyone to share, spread the wealth, take care of each other, that everything will be fine. Yet so many times, people that rely on their own goodness, people who do not realize we are fallen creatures and we do not need a higher power or intelligent being to be able to help us, people who think that human beings can do it alone We never see things go right. So this, I think, is the answer to what you were just saying, Shireen. Why? What's going on here? Why is there? Why aren't we seeing this power? Why aren't we acknowledging this this ability to, you know, move through the demon, move through the entity, move through the darkness, move through the evil? It's because there is this inherent seeded belief of unworthiness, right? There's this 
deep seated feeling of not enough, right? There's going back to what we said before, it's I got to work to earn my divinity that I am separate to. So what do you want to add to this? Can you just imagine trying to do life your entire life where you basically are like, you can't trust anyone. Everything is evil. Everything is dark. How is that lens going to work for you? I mean, how are you going to build relationship with anybody? How are you going to see the good in anyone? If, if Harrison, if every single time you're about to walk out your door, I'm like, just so you know, the neighbor across the street, murder, just so you know, the guy that's watering your flowers, he's not really well watering your flowers. He's evil. He's poisonous. And like, could you imagine how would you begin to see the world? And you looked at every single person as a lost soul. And you're like, you need to be saved. Like that's, that's heavy. That feels gross. Mm -hmm. Right. In my book, like that's, that's heavy. That's yeah. heavy. Do you, do I think there is um, a disconnection in the world? Absolutely. Do I think, I think it's like, you know, I look at someone who commits is mean to people. And I'm like, this person is deeply disconnected from who they are and from source. Like, I don't look at them as evil. I go disconnection and they chose that on some level and they have the choice to not through themselves. I was, I was telling you, Shireen, uh, I've recently just dived back into more of Gabo Mate's work. And I just, I've spoken about him on the show, like a few episodes on his, his books and his teachings. And Gabo Mate really defines a beautiful definition of what trauma is. And trauma, in his words, is disconnection from self. It's disconnection mm -hmm. from our true reality, what we are actually are. And what we actually are in my opinion, right, and 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 we can see, you can feel me and Shereen both getting very passionate here, and we're not, <laughs> we're not bashing Ben for his beliefs, but what we are saying is that there is a different view of this, and the different view is that we are not fallible, we are not broken, we are not unworthy, we're not even in need of fixing. We are made of pure unconditional love, right? We are made of pure power and potential. And if we don't feel that, it's not something we need to earn. It's something that we need to pull back the layers and come back to, right? Mm -hmm. And ask ourselves, what is the trauma? What is the belief systems? What are the, what are the thoughts that I keep thinking? What are the emotions that I'm suppressing that are not allowing that light to be expressed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to say because that's – that you know it is disconnection and i i can't wait to read um or to look more yeah. into gavin mate's new um, book. newest book um and with that being said you know in what i've learned too in my journey is even getting sucked into the trauma uh world of you know i need to be fixed and, and we've talked about this i need to be fixed i need to be fixed well now i'm attracting everything into my field that tells me i need to be fixed and so it, really like and i am i'm not trying to bash ben because he makes a really great point of how you perceive the world is how you're going to experience it and so and how you perceive yourself and if I'm perceiving the world as a scary experience and I am traumatized and I am broken, well, now I'm going to perceive everything that happens when I spill milk on the floor or, you know, stub my toe. It's like, oh, why did I do that? It's, uh, you know, what trauma caused me to trip like from my childhood? Like now we're just constantly dumping that on like feeding that energy into this concept and at some point you have to say no i'm innately good and i've had some experiences that have caused my dis caused me disconnection and through that created contrast which drives me back to myself and source so that's that's my those are my thoughts beautiful my I friends. get so passionate. I know. And that's why I wanted to do this episode. I knew, I know you do. And this is, I hope that today that we've highlighted this, one, we've highlighted this passion that we obviously both have, but two, 
you, the listener, right? Please don't, this is not the end of this conversation, right? You've now gained our perspectives and maybe you did listen to Ben, or maybe you're just coming into this episode looking to learn more about plant medicines, entities, and the nature of God. Okay. So take everything that we've just shared today and still, still ask yourself, how does this feel for me? Does this resonate with me? Is this a truth that hits something deeper for me? Right? Because the reason that Shereen and I are passionate is because we're speaking from our truth. We're speaking from our experience. We're speaking from our perspectives that are in alignment. And this is not an us thing. right? We, have, we all have access to this ability. Shereen, I think that's a beautiful place to end this. Do you have any other final points before we wrap it yeah, all up? Yeah, I think what we can agree with and what we, we walk away from, because I really appreciate how vulnerable Ben was and I can really really appreciate him having the just listen to him that are not spiritual and not, you know, um, as open. And so I think it was really brave of him. And I think that was really incredible. And I think we can agree that what we do agree with, with, with Ben is there needs to be more education. There needs to be more conversations around God entities, plant medicine, um, and, and just understanding how it works in your relationship to do it. And, and if anything, that it's our responsibility, because what he did is he took responsibility of where he was at with it. Yeah. And so take responsibility of where you're at with, with the things and areas and your beliefs in your life. Yeah. And that's all you can do. And or is, I would say, and test them, right? Test and, them. Yeah. Yeah. Test them with people. Right, that we're doing that right now with each other, Shireen. We're testing. We, yes, we have people listening, but we're testing our beliefs with each other, right? And you know, I've felt things in this conversation, like, oh, is that? Do I need to change that? Do I need to shift? Or I've also felt that, oh, this is definitely my, this is definitely my fundamental right. truth, here. right? And we do that through each other, right? So, yeah, I agree yeah. with you, I, and I, I do want to honor Ben even more here. You know, if it wasn't because of if the fact that he didn't do it, then we wouldn't be having this conversation. So the fact that he, at the very least expressed his beautiful truth. Now we get to have our share our truth and share our conversation and share our, what we believe is correct in our worldview. So thank you, my friend. I love you very much. I could not imagine doing this kind of chat with anyone else in this world. Thank you for being you. Thank you for the journey that you've had. Uh, I love you very much. Thank you, Harrison. I really appreciate it. Beautiful souls. We hope you got a lot of out of, this, out of this chat today. Again, if you did, please share this out with other friends, other family members, other people you think it could help. But regardless, we love you unconditionally. Sending light, sending love. And until next time on this show, have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Cosmic Love Antenna Podcast. We hope you enjoyed. Be sure to follow Harrison on Instagram, Twitter, and Clubhouse at Harrison Ma. That's Harrison. M-E-A-G-H-E-R.